I'm David Comstock with Friends of Badger Mountain. We're here at the City of Richland Trailhead Park, which is the gateway park to the Benton County Badger Mountain Preserve. Uh, some of the largest freshwater floods known to have happened anywhere on the planet came down through our valley. I would have ice rafted this large erratic in those flood events. This is the start of uh, the Ice Age Flood Interpretive Trail on Badger Mountain. Uh, we're surrounded with some native plant garden here. We have information on our kiosk. This is the first of our interpretive panels for the Ice Age Flood uh, Loop Trail. And we'll head on up the trail and take a look. Here we are on the uh, Canyon Trail for the Badger Mountain Trail system. And uh, we've now climbed up a few hundred feet above the valley floor. We're heading up towards the summit. But along the way, there's an interesting feature across the, across the valley behind me. Uh, there's a series of, or a cluster of granite erratics that don't belong here. The only rock native to this area is the Columbia River basalt. So when we see granitic erratics like we see across the valley, we know they, have come, they had to have come from somewhere else. They're all kind of grouped together in one, uh, one area. And we call that uh, an, a, an erratic cluster as opposed to isolated erratics, what we saw on Gandy Mountain and Berg Mounds that we'll see at our next stop on Little Badger. These erratics are here probably because when the floods came down from the north, they came through Sentinel Gap into the Pasco Basin and flowed across the, the front of, Fred, of Badger Mountain, which is here in front of us. Some of the flow of the water went maybe around into the side gully where we are now, creating an eddy that might have deposited these erratics all in this grouping that we see here in front of us. Behind me is what we call Lake Lewis. Lake Lewis is a temporary lake that only existed for a few weeks during, during the Ice Age. When the Ice Age floods came down from Glacial Lake Missoula, and it would drain through the panhandle of Idaho into the Spokane area, into another lake called Glacial Lake Columbia, before it spilled out across the Channel Scabland. It all ended up coming down here in the Tri-Cities, where we are now heading for Wallula Gap, the floodwaters had spread out for 100 miles across eastern Washington, and then they were forced to go through an opening that was only two miles wide at Wallula Gap. That caused the water to back up. The lake level rose to about 1,200 feet, 1,250 feet where we are right now. This is a marker that we placed at that high water mark at the 1,250 feet. Everything below us, for as far as we can see, was underwater. So how do we know how deep the water got? The water's not here anymore. It disappeared 14, 15,000 years ago. The way we can tell is by looking for ice rafted erratics. Erratics that were rafted in on icebergs. Foreign rocks like granite and argillite. Similar to this one, this is, an, this is a, an example of granite rock. When we see rocks like this present, we know these are foreign rocks that don't belong here. The only native rock is Columbia River basalt. The floodwaters came into a broad open valley, so the water slowed down, maybe only 10, 20, 30 miles an hour. That allowed a lot of icebergs to pool up into this slack water area and move up into tributary valleys, depositing erratics that we see. We know the floodwaters got up to at least this depth. And on Rattlesnake Mountain, and other places, we've seen erratics go up to about 1,200 feet elevation. And we know the water had to go up a little higher in order to float those icebergs to carry the erratics up to a, to a lower elevation. Another question people have is how many floods were there? We know there was, there was at least one flood to bring in all these boulders, but was it just one or was it 20 or was it 100? And one way we can tell that, we've determined how many floods there are, is we've gone into back flooded valleys where the floods rushed up into these tributary canyons, tributary valleys like the Walla Walla, the Yakima Valley, the Willamette Valley. Those are places where the floods rushed in and then they stagnated, deposited layers of sediment 
and we think right now there could have been as many as 100 different Ice Age floods during the last glacial cycle between about 15,000 and about 20,000 years ago.